Okay, I want to talk about uh, a really fun topic, Media Capture and the Streams API. So this is part of or related to the WebRTC, that's the Web Real-Time Communications API. If you want to be able to do peer-to-peer -peer communications, pass files back and forth between browsers routed through a server, if you want to be able to stream audio and video between people, that's the WebRTC API. But sort of a first step to getting into this is understanding the Media Capture and Streams API. So here what we're going to be able to do is access the microphone and camera that's attached to your computer or built into your laptop and we can capture audio, capture video, and you can even save it capturing whatever's coming through or part of what's coming through and then saving that, displaying it inside of another f uh, video or audio element using the uh, HTML5 canvas to display a screenshot, a snip it from the video if you want to display it on the canvas you can do that and then apply filters you can download it tons of stuff you can do so what I want to do right here is I'm going to show you how you can connect to the built-in webcam the built-in microphone or the plugged-in webcam microphone how you can take that video display it in a video tag and then how you can also record the video save it in another video element and actually let the user download it Okay, so let's take a look at this. We have uh, a very simple page here. I've got some filler text, a paragraph that has two buttons, one for starting and stopping the recording. We'll come back to this in a bit. I have two video elements. Uh, both of them have controls. This first one is going to display what's coming through the webcam, and the second one's going to be when we record something, we're going to save it inside of here. We're going to display it here and let the user actually download it. All right, now there are constraints. What we're going to be doing is this command right here. This is the one that does most of the work. In the navigator object in the browser, there's a media devices object, and that has a method called get user media. This is how you access the camera. This is how you access the microphone. It will automatically prompt the user for permissions. It'll say, hey, um, the website wants to use your webcam. It wants to use your microphone. Do you want to allow it? They say yes. We're good to go. If they say no, so this returns a promise. If you're familiar with promises, fantastic. If not, I recommend looking at the series on promises. I'll put a link to that in the video at the, uh, at the end or in the description. So the promise is going to call a function when it gets something successful back. So that's what this function right here and this media stream object is get user media is going to be bringing back a stream for you and that stream can in include multiple tracks there could be an audio track and a video track or just one or the other then that is what you're going to take and you're going to feed that into the video or audio element now if it fails your catch this is what's going to run so we have navigator media devices get user media gives you back a, you pass in a constraints object to say these are the parameters that I want to allow for the capture. If it works, the then is going to fire. If it doesn't, the catch method is going to fire. And we could have one of a whole bunch of these things. So there's uh, abort error. This is just the name for the generic type. Okay, we don't know what caused this thing. Um, user gave us permission. The hardware seems to be working. We're not sure what went wrong. Not allowed error used to be called security error. This is the user said, no, you're not allowed. I won't give you permission to access my webcam or my microphone. Not found error means the uh, connection was made, but couldn't find the media track that it was referencing. So there's no media streaming through. Not readable error. So the user gave permission, but there was a hardware error or something that went wrong in the operating system. Over constrained error. Um, the settings that you pass in right up here when you call get user media these parameters the parameters that you were asking for are not met by the camera or the microphone where the stuff is coming from and then last of all type error well if you've got audio and video in your constraints both set to false then you're not going to be able to get one of the tracks and that's going to fail okay let's take a look at the constraints object because that's what we need to pass in with get user media to get this working it is simply a JavaScript object, and there's two main properties, audio and video. 
you can set these to just true and false. If you want, you can just say audio true, video true, and you've got everything. The system will figure out wh how, what the bit rate is, what the dimensions of the screen are, what the bit rate for the audio is, all those things. It'll just say, okay, here's the best that I can do. Boom. If not, then um, if you want to do more than that, then you can pass in an object with additional parameters. So for the video, for example, facing mode, this can be either user or environment. That's another option. If you want to force it to be the user facing camera, let's say this is on a mobile device and you want to say, okay, no, it ha has to be the camera that's facing the user. Then you can pass an object instead of a string where you say exact colon and then the user. So this is an object that you put instead of the string. For width and height, you can pass in some numbers and say, okay, this is kind of what I'd like, but if you can't do it, fine. This is just my preference. If you want to be more specific, again, you can pass in an object and you can specify a minimum, a maximum dimension and the ideal dimensions. So I've said, okay, anywhere from 640 by 480 up to 1920 by 1080, whatever your webcam is gonna support, I'm good with that. Or whatever the rear facing or front facing camera on your mobile device supports, great, I'll do that. This is what I'm aiming for with my ideal, but I'll take anything in this range. So we pass in this constraint object into here. Now this little bit of code snippet here, this is uh, having to do with the older browsers. I will come back and talk about this in a little bit, but right now I just wanted to get the thing up and running. So we pass in the constraints, that gives us a promise. When the promise resolves, meaning it worked, there was no errors, we get past the media stream object, which will contain the audio and or video. Now I have in my options here, audio set to false, so I'm only gonna get the video. I'm going to find my video element on the page. This is the first video element. I remember I had two of them if we look up here. So there was one with no ID and then one with the ID video too. This is where we're going to save the recording. This is the one where we're going to display. So the one at the top is where you're going to display whatever's coming through the webcam. Okay, back down into our function. So we found that first video element. Now there's two ways of doing this, two ways of setting the source. Uh, the older version is with the source property. There's also a source object property. This is in the newer browsers. Um, I mean, newer, anything in the last like three, four years is going to have this, should have this property in there. You can just take the media stream that's coming in and set it to the source object, and then we're good to go. One last thing is that we want to add an event listener for the loaded metadata event. When this event happens, uh, I'm calling video play. Without this, what happens is the video is there on the screen, but it's just blank. There's nothing showing up. Uh, the user can hit play, and then whatever's on the webcam is going to start showing there. But we want to do that automatically for the user. So we wait for this event. This is really the, okay, the video is ready to start playing now. All right, play it. So let's take a look at this, see how it works. So first of all, we should get the prompt for the permissions. There it is wants us to use the camera. I have audio set to false, so it's only asking me about the camera. If I had said audio true, it would have asked me about that as well in one permission thing here. Here's my two videos. This is the one that's gonna display what's in coming from my webcam as soon as I click allow. Well, as soon as I click allow and then have the on loaded metadata. So here I am coming through. Here's the second one, nothing's happening in here yet. What the page is going to do is if I hit start recording, it's recording whatever's coming on here, and then I hit stop recording. Now, between those two button clicks, it recorded some media, and here it is. It has now put it into the second video element. Okay, in the second video element, if I click play, you can see I'm not talking, and in the video, <laughs> that's me playing. So that was the audio recording that was happening. All right, come back to the page. Let's take a look at the last little bit of script here. The recording. That's what this last little bit at the bottom is all about. So I get some references. Here's my starting button, my stopping button, my second video element, and a media recorder. So this is the uh, media stream recording API. So it's a second API. We create a media recorder object and we pass that stream in. We still have to do this get user media because this is the thing that gets the permissions and it gets the stream. 
we are feeding that video stream into this recorder object, or we're connecting the two of them. We haven't told it to start recording yet. We've just said, okay, this is the stream that you're going to be listening to. I'm going to create an array. This is where I'm going to put the data. So as I'm recording, or at, once I tell it to start recording, it's going to be feeding data into this array. When it's done, we're going to take the contents of this array, turn it into a blob, and then put it into that second video tag. All right, now my start button and my stop button. These are the two buttons that are right above the first video. And it's really just this. Media recorder start, media recorder stop. That's the start, that's the stop. That's all you need to do to get the recording to start and stop. Now on data available, this is how we're gonna feed this array of chunks. As it's recording, as this media recorder object is recording from the stream, we're going to take the chunks Every time there's a chunk available, this event gets called on data available. Now you can see I did it this way instead of add event listener. The reason I did that is you're never going to add more than one on data available. You're never going to add more than one on stop event listener. There's not going to be multiple listeners for these things. So I don't have to do add event listener. I'm just going to do it this way. This is all we're doing in here. When the data from the event is ready, we add it to that chunks array. So we're just adding it to this array. All we're doing. Then on stop, when we're finished recording, so we've clicked the stop button, we've told the media recorder to stop recording. Now the on stop event fires. And inside of here, here's the, the main workhorse. We're creating a new blob, binary large object. We're taking that array and we're passing it into the blob and we're defining what kind of data it is. So I'm saying I'm going to record it as a, an MP4 file. That's the type. So I save it in here and then I clear out the array. Now I don't have to do this to make this work, but if I don't, then I'm going to have two copies of that data sitting there. No point in doing that. Let's clean up the chunks array so that next time we record, we're not adding to the end of that. We're just clearing it out to save memory. Now I'm going to take that blob that I created and I'm going to convert that into an object URL. This is a URL that I can use as the video source. So the second video element on my page, its source, I need to point at a file. Well, what I'm doing is I'm taking this data and I'm turning it into a reference. This is my file location for that blob of data. It's where the blob of data has been saved. We're taking that and we're setting it as the source for this video object. Now that we have this in here, you can actually come over here and download. There we go. I have just downloaded that recording. So I have an MP4 file here and you can see it generated uh, a GUID, a unique identifier, globally unique identifier for the name of this file. That was just done automatically for me. All right, and that's full cycle around. That's going in, setting up the options, uh, asking for permissions, getting it to start displaying the information inside the video element, and then starting and stopping recording to save it as a file. You can then take that file. You can, if you want, uh, have the user save it, or uh, in a future video, we'll talk about how to send it up to the server. Uh, last thing to talk about, I mentioned before, I've got some code here for dealing with the older versions of this API. Inside the navigator object, we have our media devices object. This is the one that does the recording. Well, there was some early versions of this, some prefixed versions of the get user media. So that's what we're going to be looking for inside of here. Um, if that is undefined, we're going to create this object. We're going to create a function that deals with the old versions. If it does, what I'm doing right here. So this is the code that is actually running on this page right now. So we'll come back over here. I'm going to pause this. And if I bring up my console, go to my JavaScript console. Okay, this is what's been written out in the console. Now, recording and inactive, those were the statuses that we got down here at the bottom console log media recorder state. That's what was being written out recording and inactive. 
so inactive it was no longer recording. This is a list of all of the potential devices for input and output for, if I refresh the page, there we go. Here's the audio input, here's the audio output, and then the video input. Uh, it was blank last time because it wrote this before it had permissions to do to access the video camera. But my default is this Yeti microphone, and it shows up again here, once as the default, and then once just as the list. But it shows up first in this list of devices. Come back here, we'll look at this code. There we are. Navigator.mediadevices.enumerate devices. This gives you a list of all the available microphones and webcams on the person's computer or device, their phone, whatever it is. Again, this is a promise that comes back. So we have a then and a catch. Inside the then, this is an array. So I can just do a loop. I'm doing a for loop and I'm writing out the device.kind and the device.label. There's also a, a device ID. Like right now I'm doing um, the label and the kind. It's audio input, video input, or audio output, or video output. Those are the kinds. Uh, if we wanted, we could change this and write out the device ID. That's another possible property. There are a few others as well. So these are the unique identifiers. These are the IDs for these different devices. All right, so I'll put that back to the way it was. This will be saved in the code just for you guys to take a look at. And last step, looking at the older version of the code. So if media devices is undefined, what we're doing is we're creating an empty object as this. We're saying, okay, this is just an empty object. And then we're adding a property called get user media to this object. And it is a function right here. Oh, sorry, all the way down to here. This is our function. And here's the prefixed versions. It's either WebKit get user media or Moz get user media. These are the two older prefixed versions. Again, we're passing in the constraints object that we defined right here. Oh, sorry, that should be constraint obj. There we are. So this constraint object is being passed into this function. We're getting the prefixed version. And if that doesn't work, well, then we know for sure that this was not supported. So we're going to do a rejected promise, passing the error. That's going to come down to our catch way down here at the bottom. This is the one that when we called get user media, get user media, then catch. So this is the one that's being called by this right here. When we're rejecting it, it's because well, we don't have get user media and we don't even have the prefixed versions. So it's going to reject the promise, which is going to call that catch down at the bottom. And if we get past this, it means, okay, yeah, we do have a prefixed version. So we can return a promise and call the get user media function, passing in the resolve and reject. Here's the navigator object. Here's the constraint. Again, this should be constraint obj. There we are and navigator object right up here. Uh, when you use the call method, you're calling a function and you need to provide the context for this. Well, navigator is the context. All right, and that's gonna call this and then we're off to the races. All right, so I, I hope that uh, made sense. Uh, I hope that encourages you to start playing around with uh, the media capture, the streams API, and also the media recorder API. Yeah, there we go. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If you found this useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.